For the people of this rock are as warm as they are hospitable. We are as welcoming of new Gibraltarians, such as yourself, as we are fearsome guardians of this, the home of the Gibraltarians. You will know this from your forays here in the Royal Navy. The senior service, which first identified the strategic significance of the rock that the Romans had called the non plus ultra. It was the Navy that identified that beyond our straits, no one could pass without Britain's knowledge if they held Jebel Tariq. For this British place is one that you will find is very different to other British places. You will find that we are not English, and this is not England. It may sound obvious to you and to the many hearing me today, but it is not as obvious to everyone as it should be. We are not Scottish, nor Irish, nor Welsh. We are Gibraltarian in our style and form, the people of the rock. And we are not better because we are Gibraltarian, but we are certainly also not worse. We are just different, British, but different as different as each of the British people of the great British family of nations, but no less British as a result. But bound by history, custom, and constitution into a British way of being. And of course, we are British in our own way, in our own style, with our own laws. And those laws and that constitution are the key to your important but well and tightly defined role. Your service now is without constitutional doubt to Her Majesty in right of her government of Gibraltar. If I can put it this way, Your Excellency, you are now the non-executive chairman of this club and don our colours. There is an expectation by Her Majesty that you may have to bat for Gibraltar if called upon. You will not be expected to be one of the opening batsmen or indeed will not even be required to occupy the crease very long. But if necessary, you may have to step onto the field of play for the red and white team and the people of Gibraltar. Your Excellency will also be required to walk the constitutional tightrope between the competences of ministers and his own limited duties with the skill of a ballerina and always in the interests of the people of Gibraltar. As a naval officer, I am, of course, very mindful of the welcome and sanctuary that Gibraltar has provided to sailors serving under the White Ensign for many years and the support Gibraltar has given to the fleet. The strategic importance of Gibraltar never alters. And while the number of service men and women who are stationed here has fallen, the welcome given to those in uniform never changes. As you know, my two predecessors were Royal Marines. And while I fully appreciate the close bond between the Corps and Gibraltar, marked perpetually in the cap badge worn on the Green Beret, I am incredibly proud that a representative of another part of the Naval Service is this time about to make his home in the convent. More important, the good-natured rivalry between the services. The appointment I am privileged to assume indicates in a, no a way no other appointment can the strength of relations between the United Kingdom and Gibraltar. I recognize my new office as the clearest possible symbol of friendship between people geographically separated but no less bound tightly together. The office represents everything that is good in mutual understanding and support our shared loyalty to democratic principles and the rule of law, our shared values, and a selfless ambition in a dynamic and often insecure world for the benefit of the people of Gibraltar and the United Kingdom. The office represents a guarantee of friendship and partnership. The role is also a vehicle through which to effect change where it is beneficial to all. Gibraltar's constitution provides for a modern relationship between mature democracies, both relying on each other in so many ways. As an individual so very fortunate to be invited to represent Her Majesty the Queen in Gibraltar, I will do my utmost to make sure that nothing can undermine the strength of partnership that has existed for many hundreds of years between Gibraltar and the United Kingdom. 
I know that the relationship will be tested at times, as are relations in the closest of families. But by use of a common language and through shared values and shared strategic intent, I am in no doubt that such challenges can be overcome.